everyone and welcome to the Sleepy Fox Yarns podcast. I am your host. My name is Holly. I live in North Carolina with my family. <laughs> um, so this is a podcast about crocheting, knitting, the yarn I'm hoarding, shop updates, and any other occasional craft that I would like to share with you guys. Um, so yeah. Hello, all new subscribers and viewers. Thank you for watching and hopefully you will stick around by hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoy the content. Um, and welcome back to all my returning viewers and subscribers. I appreciate you guys. You make doing this worthwhile because I love being able to share my craftiness with people that love being crafty. I mean, because my husband just could give two about what I do in my crafty life. <laughs> um, so yeah, sorry, I am, I got a new Kindle during the, um, sorry, Prime, Amazon Prime days, um, because my kids broke my Kindle Paperwhite by taking it outside and leaving it in the rain. So I got a Kindle Fire. So I am recording on this to so hopefully, fingers crossed, the quality is better and yes. <laughs> so anyways, um, we have a little bit of admin. We are current, we, me, I say we, but me, I am currently running the Making Christmas Mal, which is any craft. The only stipulations are, it has to be either a gift for someone or you're making something for Christmas. So it could be a tree skirt, it could be stockings, it could be anything because Christmas making is in full swing at my house. I have already started because I want to have them done well in advance. So now that I'm talking about this, I almost forgot a whip. <laughs> um, I knew I was forgetting something. Almost, 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 almost forgot one which is sitting in a freaking grocery bag right now because well actually I could put it in this little cute tote because I am so ready for Halloween guys I am so ready for fall like and I can already feel the seasons changing the days are getting shorter now like the sun's going down sooner and I don't know if it's just we had a really hot spike the last couple weeks and then all of a sudden we're back into the 80s again which is phenomenal. Um, I'm not gonna mess with this right now. It has been amazing. I'm loving it and it is just great. <sighs> it's been so nice. So yes, um, it is currently, what time is it? It is currently nine, almost nine o'clock at night. So I am doing a nightly podcast tonight. Um, and we have a full episode, guys. <laughs> like it's been a while, but we have a full episode. Um, which is really surprising to me because I had a really big order the last couple weeks and I've been every weekend working on that order and even during the week and I even wrangled my husband into helping me with this big order and yet I still managed to get so much done. So, or started, I should say started, not done, but let's get started in the FOs because you have a first ever FO. You've never seen this project. I have been wanting to do this and I haven't gotten around to it. And the yarn's been sitting here waiting for me to do it. And it just, it took a while. It took a while. So this is my big round rug. So it is just a circular rug no big deal um so what i did is if you've been watching for any amount of time since about last winter i tried to make a super bulky sweater for some reason which doesn't make any sense to me now but i wanted to make a super bulky sweater that was going to be super big and super chunky and super comfy but it just wasn't working it was driving me crazy and i was just i was over it um, but I knew I still wanted to use this gorgeous marled yarn. Um, 
which this yarn is Loops and Threads Copenhagen in the colorway, uh, the Fjord colorway. So absolutely love this colorway. It is typically not what I would go for. It's very neutral. There's a lot of browns and beiges and whites and charcoal-y browns. Like, oh, it's gorgeous and I love it. So I was like, you know what? I want a dang rug for my craft room. I want a rug in the center of this room that's going to be super squishy and cozy that I can sit on, I can meditate, I can burn my incense and, you know, zone out and zen, you know, and be on this rug that's just super squishy and soft and just be. And that's what I did. And I held three strands together of this yarn and actually I have three balls of this three good sized balls like I could probably get another round out of it but I feel like it's the perfect size so now I have a lot of leftover yarn of this and I don't know what to do with it so I may go back and put another row but as of right now I don't want to I like it the way it is my kids like it my cat likes it <laughs> Lily likes it. Everyone seems to come into the craft room to lay on this rug. So I am super happy with it. I like it a lot. And I know you guys can barely see it. So I'll show it one more time because it is so pretty. I love it. So as you can see, it is pretty holy. It's not a super like dense fabric. Like it's not a dense fabric and I was really hoping it would be, but I've noticed when you do really big, big squares, big circles, they tend to warp out of shape. So it's like, no matter what you do, that circle is never going to be a circle. It eventually turns into some type of octagon, septagon, whatever, gone. <laughs> and eventually the sides start getting really straight. And I didn't want that, so that's why I used three strands together. I used a big 25 millimeter hook for this. Um, I didn't need to, but I really wanted those stitches to be really big and fluffy. And it just came out exactly the way I wanted. And I'm so happy with this. I actually need to make a project page for this. Um, so yeah, my first FO in forever. So someone is up and they're not supposed to be. <laughs> um, so moving on to whips. We'll get into the ones you've seen already and then start with some new ones because I did start some new ones because, I don't know, working on the same two projects has just been kind of driving me a little like postal and not wanting to work on them. But I did get so... Okay, I thought I dropped stitches. I thought I dropped stitches. So the last time I showed you this sock, it is where the stitch marker was right here. Um, so I am, um, I did the heel flap. I think I'm done with the heel flap. I just have to do the heel turn um, and then start working on the gusset and then the foot. So made quite a bit of progress on this. And these colors are blowing out so bad. I was really hoping that the colors would show through better. But it probably doesn't help that I have my TV on and it's like blue because it's showing a picture of the ocean right now. Um, so yes, this is um, my yarn company, Sleepy Fox Yarns uh, Co Company. <laughs> I can't talk today, guys. <laughs> this is my yarn company, Sleepy Fox Yarn Company. Um, and this is the Fairy Season colorway, which once this is gone from the shop, I probably won't ever be redying it because I've had to redye it several times now and I'm kind of done. Like, I'm done doing this colorway. I'm like ready to move on. Um, so here's what it looks like in the ball, which, God. 
it is so hard to find a camera that will show colors accurately like what like this looks so pale so pale on here it is ridiculous but it is actually a pretty vibrant pink it's still a pale pink but it is very vibrant compared to what's showing up um so yeah, I'm using 2.25 millimeter needles using the um, Morning Coffee Socks pattern by Kay from the K Crazy Sock Lady podcast, um, which this is the first time I've ever done a pattern sock. And I have to say her patterns are, well, this pattern at least was super easy to follow, super easy to get down and I honestly I love it I love the way it looks and the only thing I did differently is instead of doing the one by one I think it's like a twisted rib I just did normal one by run rib because when I did the twisted part it ended up being too tight like there was no get there was no like there was no getting your foot into it basically so yeah that is my first whip Boop. And that is in my Hocus Pocus Lila Styles bag. Because you know me, I love me some spooky stuff. Like this sign right here says, it's just a bunch of Hocus Pocus. <laughs> it is Halloween all year round in my craft room. I don't take my Halloween stuff down from here because I'm just spooky. I like spooky things. Like, I'm sorry not sorry I love it like I have a bouquet of black and dark purple roses right here with like black weedy things coming out of it definitely channeling my inner Morticia Adams with that one. Oh, water so next up I did get a chance to work on this bad boy I didn't put a lot of work into it I got about Oh, what is that? Inch and a half, two inches on it. So this is the flax sweater that I am making for my brother-in-law. Um, so we're getting there. We're getting there. The body is getting there. It's just, it's taken a while. So last time you guys saw it, it was where that stitch marker is. So I got about inch and a half two inches done not much it's just at this point it is very much just knitting in the round and although it's super mindless and easy I have to be doing something like watching TV to do work on this if not it's very boring very quickly um so the yellow I am using um geez, these ends I am using paint box yarns this is an acrylic 100% acrylic yarn um I didn't want to fork out the money for a wool yarn just because I don't know if they want that kind of upkeep and two that expensive yo especially for a sweater that's being knit in 3x <laughs> that's a lot of money <laughs> so um yeah so the yellow is the buttercup yellow in the Simply Erin. So it's paint box yarn Simply Erin in the buttercup yellow. And then the purple, which is purple, I know it's kind of showing blue, um, pansy purple in the Simply Erin. Um, so yeah, we are getting there slowly but surely. I feel like if I can complete this by the end of August, that's a win because I've never completed a garment. So if I can complete one within two months, like we're doing good. So that is flax. The pattern is flax by Tin Can Knits. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, so yes. So now are the two new whips, right? One, two. Okay. Yes the two new whips that I've started. So, um, we recently got Emma a bunk bed and she's actually, um, we're starting to decorate her room. I'll say that. Um, so 
I was looking at her floor and I'm like, you need a rug. And I initially bought these yarns to start a rug for her room. And yes, they are very baby-ish colors, but she loves baby pink. She loves light colors, bright. She loves every color under the sun, basically, unless it's like diarrhea, baby puke, green. <laughs> like, um, so this is kind of just gonna be a rectangular. <sighs> this thing, like my cast on is, oh. My chain is too tight. So here, we'll just, we'll show the short. Just, so it's just going to be a rectangular rug. I'm going to try and get as much out of this yarn as I can. Um, so I'm holding two strands at once just to kind of make it squishy again, kind of like the big one. And I am using a 10 a millimeter hook. Um, and I don't know if they still sell this yarn or not. Um, this yarn was actually clearanced at my Walmart, not my Walmart, my Michaels. Mm, I'm not sure if I bought it out here while we were in North Carolina or if I bought it while we were still in Virginia. Um, but it is the Burnap Mix Baby. Um, this is the coral colorway. And I'm holding it double with a second Burnout Mix Baby in the purple colorway. So I figured holding these together, there's like a light baby peachy corally color and a like baby turquoise. And then this one is white and purple. So I figured holding them together would be a really pretty combo. I know it's really light and my daughter's room is bright pink. Like we just bought our bunk bed that is bright pink <laughs> um which wasn't the plan I initially was gonna go get like a white black or silver one but when I saw that the pink bunk bed was $50 cheaper because it was pink like even the blue one was still $50 more expensive so I was like well I'm sure she's gonna love it even though the pink bunk bed was supposed to be for her and Colin so when Colin gets old enough he he goes to share the room with Emma you know, he would have his bed on there as well. So <laughs> he's gonna have to sleep on a pink bunk bed eventually. Um, so yeah, that is what I've started for her room. And this was literally sitting on the floor for <laughs> half an hour. And I started working on this like this is as far as I got I know it's not a lot but I was sitting on the floor and I was pretty uncomfortable and I was you know talking to the kids and not 100% focusing on it so hopefully I need to fix that why it's so dang loose I might have to like do something about that cast on edge I don't know um so yeah that is going to be a little squishy rug for her which I'm thinking I might add like a they have those like anti-slip rug things that like you can put it under the rugs that you buy and it keeps them from slipping. I'm thinking I might sew one of those onto this um, just to make it a little extra thick and so it doesn't wiggle around the room, you know? Um, so yeah, that is my fourth project I believe I've showed you guys now. Um, so the next one, is a gift net. Now, ooh, I'm not going to say who this is for because I don't know if she's watching or not. Um, she might be, she might not be. Hold on. I'm trying to get rid of this dang Walmart bag so it's not all crinkly, which the rest of my projects have not been in a bag. None of them have been in a bag except the socks because all my bags are full of projects. <laughs> So all my bags are like disappearing now. Um, so Jeez, <gasps> 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 that was a burp and a yawn all together. Wow. So this is going to be a really long cowl that can kind of like squoosh up, you know, um, which now that I'm looking at it and seeing how tall it is, I'm, well, I've seen cowls that are that tall before, like people holding them up over their head and stuff, but those are typically fingering weight and this is worsted. So I don't know. 
it might be too thick I might have to rip all this out I don't know so my plan was to do a gingham cowl and beanie set um so now that I'm looking at this this is like really long for a cowl because my plan was to do it this way and then sew it together along this edge so I need your guys' advice is this too long like and it is for a non-adult let's say that um they're a kid almost teen teen I don't know is that too much I feel like I don't know but yeah I was thinking of doing this gingham plaid I feel like if I just took out one set of squares that would be better right so maybe like just cut would that be crazy to cut it and then somehow like oh now that'd be a bad idea I just have to rip it all back wouldn't I Ooh, poop the things we do for the people we love um so yeah this is not by any pattern I was just making this up as I go and totally just going for it and I was not trying to pull the yarn I wasn't trying to hold the yarn with it I did floats on the back because I was planning on doing like the faux sheep's wool like the sheepskin on it um to make it extra thick so if I'm doing that then it really shouldn't be this long um to make it extra thick and warm even though they live in California it doesn't get that cold but you know who knows maybe they go to the snow and they may need one for whatever reason <laughs> so yeah that was what I was planning on doing so yeah I tried doing oh my gosh I started this project probably about five or six times I started crocheting it and I'm like what was it I started crocheting it and chain like starting it for whatever reason like I would get like two rows in and I wasn't liking the way it looked and then I was like well let me try again so I tried it again still wasn't liking the way I looked I was trying to like pull hold the yarn underneath as I went and just like picked it up and like brought it all the way across and I didn't like the way it was looking so I was like well maybe I'll do it knitted so I tried knitting it and I'm like mm, I don't like this either mm, I don't like it I don't like it so yeah I did not do the knitted one I tried the knitted one once tried it again crocheting didn't like it and then finally I was like you know what I'm just gonna hold the yarn in the back and try it that way I did it but now it's too long shoot so I'm sorry I'm so thirsty and I don't know why because I drink a lot of water <laughs> I drink so much water sometimes it's ridiculous like eight bottles of water in a day which is not bad, which is not good for the environment. I know this, but um, we live on base and the water on base tastes like drinking pool water with dirt. No, thank you. Um, I want to get one of those um, like water filters. So yeah, that'd be way too small for me. I don't know, would that be too? Would that be too small for a teenager? I don't know. I, I'm just going to have to start it again. Um, so the yarn I'm using is Red Heart Super Saver. Sorry. Um, the dark blue right here is Royal. I believe this blue is Delft Blue. Yeah, Delft Blue. Also Red Heart Super Saver. And then the white is Red Heart Super Saver, and I believe that is just white. Yeah, white. Um, I 
you know, it was funny because I originally did not want to use Red Heart, but now that I'm feeling it, it doesn't actually feel that bad. And I know once I wash it, it will get softer. So yeah, that is that. I started a couple of projects. I finished one and still working on the two that have been dragging on the rest of my life. Um, so yeah. Oh, I know what else I need to show you guys. Hold on. Okay. So I had an acquisition that I bought a couple months ago, actually now. Um, and I was waiting for it and I've had this for at least a month. So I ordered it like three months ago. I've had it for about a month. Completely forgot to show you guys about it. But um, on Instagram, you can find the most beautiful ergonomic hooks that are handmade. Sorry, I'm itching my nosy, my nosy. Um, I'm going to get to the seller because I don't remember who I ordered this from. Um, yeah, I'd have to switch to the Etsy app. Shoot. Um, <clears throat> so I ended up ordering a ergonomic hook from, I want to say it's like Chloe's, Chloe's Boutique or, oh shoot, hold on. Now this is going to really bother me if I don't figure out who it is. Bye. Or let me just go to Instagram because I know her Instagram. I think it's like Chloe. Okay. Let me, yeah. Okay, so it is Chloe Rebecca Boutique. Um, she makes these amazing ergonomic hooks. And um, I had to get one. I love Game of Thrones. Um, I got it in a G hook, so I believe that's a four millimeter. Um, it says how stark winter is coming. I saw this the very first time she released it and I wanted one so bad and um let me scoot back so my face it's not like close up hey um I wanted one so bad and they sold out inst she sold out instantly like by the time I got to the page they were gone unless it was like a super teeny tiny hook or um a house that I didn't want which I am all for House Stark. Technically Targaryen, I guess, too, because I really love Jon. Who doesn't? Right? Am I right? Um, which is technically a Targaryen. Um, so, yeah. I saw that, and I was just in love. And let me tell you, I have not used this hook because I haven't had any um, four millimeter projects on the go at the moment. Um, but I have to say, I love the way the hook feels in my hand. Like it's very comfortable to hold. Um, which I, it's so funny because I go from pencil to knife. So sometimes I will knife hold when it is like a very big hook where I don't want to use my wrist a lot because the motion is so exaggerated. It hurts my wrist. So I go either way. Now, <laughs> I only have one complaint about this hook. Now, I thought this lettering was going to be painted on and it feels like it's stickers. And I know they put like a protective coating over it, but it just, I feel like it's gonna come off really easy, which is gonna make me not wanna use this. And this is just gonna be like a pretty collector item. 
because I really love it. I think it's beautiful. Like the white on it, I don't know if you can tell. It's got like this iridescent, like you can kind of see at the tip here. It's kind of got this iridescence and bright shimmer to it and it's gorgeous. It's freaking gorgeous. But I'm just so worried that using this will rub the letters off and I really don't want to do that. And for the price I paid for it, I really want to use it, um, which, um, I want to, I want to say, mm, I don't remember how much this was, but I was thought they would be hand painted on, which I mean, I get that would be really hard to get these letters so accurate. So I understand why they're not. But at the same time with them being this kind of stickery thing, I'm, oh, of course. And she's on a short break, so I can't see the prices unless I go into my actual um, Etsy account and I don't have it signed in right now. So I believe I paid $18. I want to say it was $18. Um, so yeah, that's my only gripe with this and another thing that I was a little shocked at is once I bought this it said it was going to take 10 to 12 weeks to ship which I was like "Ooh, 10 to 12 weeks like that's insane mind you it did not take that long it I think took four weeks which is understandable for a handmade item like I get it it takes time but when I saw that 10 to 12 week one I was like holy mother of geez like wow excuse me so it didn't take that long it took about four weeks um so yeah that was the only acquisition but this was like from months ago and I forgot to show you guys <laughs> other than that there is no other acquisitions um I just I'm tr trying to use up what I have which is quite a bit at this point it's getting to a ridiculous amount and it was funny because I was sitting here and I was watching um Christine I was catching up on her podcast she had two episodes I hadn't watched yet well I was winding up um the self-striping yarn that was part of an order I was watching her and she's talking about how something about watching podcasts I can't remember what she said, but it made me think I'm like, this is why I don't watch podcasts because I want to make everything that I see them making. And that means I end up buying more yarn. I end up buying things. I start projects that I don't finish. And I'm like, maybe subconsciously, this is why I have not watched podcasts <laughs> in forever. Because all I want to do when I do that is start all the products that I'm seeing or buying the yarn that they're talking about because it's oh so great I am just so gullible guys that it's like if someone says this apple is the best apple you'll ever eat like I have to have that apple I need to have that apple because it is the best apple and everybody wants that apple so I have to have it too like gosh can I see be such like oh my gosh I'm such a sheep man like don't be a sheep <laughs> or yeah it's a sheep right yeah <laughs> I'm terrible at that so yeah next I have a little segment of what I've been reading so I have been reading um, a little bit more lately kind of got bit by the reading bug um, which I am starting this book which is these are all library books because yeah I'm taking advantage of my local library instead of buying all the books even though I'd rather buy all the books but I don't have room for all the books right now so um, yeah, so I read the first book, which is First Grave on the Right, and this is by Dorinda Jones. I'm thinking that's how you say it. Dorinda? Dear... Dorinda, I think so. Um, that's the author's name. And this one is Second Grave t on the left. Yeah, so First Grave on the Right was the first book. Second Grave on the left is the second book, and I'm just starting which shout out to my grandmammy my grandma 
she made me this um bookmark a long time ago actually and i still have it and i still use it and i'm surprised at how clean it is <laughs> um she cross stitched this for me um it is just a june bookmarker that i use actually a lot um so yeah I am starting this one. The first book was really good. Um, I read through it pretty quickly once the pace picked up. I mean, the first chapter, first few chapters, it was good. There was no bad parts to it. It was all great. Um, but I was trying to read two books at once, and sometimes that gets a little overwhelming to my brain because I'll start mixing up stories. That happens pretty often with me, especially if they're similar genres. So this book is, um, this woman, the woman it's based on, Char Charlie Davidson. Um, she is the Grim Reaper. What? And because she's the Grim Reaper and her uncle and dad worked on the police force, she has been helping solve murders since she was a child because she's the Grim Reaper. Um, but then there's a mysterious shadow man in her dreams that have been coming to her, giving her um, pleasant dreams, so we say. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but it just, it got, it was so good. And like by the end, I'm just like chomping at the bit. I'm like, I need the next book. So luckily they have quite a few books of this. I was going to pick up the second and third, but the third was checked out or they didn't have it. I'm pretty sure it was just checked out. Um, so yeah, I was checking this one out and then I also picked up a Sherilyn Kenyon book because I love Sherilyn Kenyon. This girl is amazing. I can never say anything bad about her. I just, every book I've read of hers, which I have read at this point at least 10 or more, they are amazing. They are just flat out amazing. I love her book. So this one is called Dragon Bane. It is about um, Maxis Drago, who is a dragon living in New Orleans. What? What? So I cannot wait to dig into this one. I am very much a fantasy reader. I don't do real life fiction, real life fiction. I don't do nonfiction. I don't read fiction that is like real life events. Like I just, I can't read about people's down and out experiences. It's depressing to me. I just, even if there's a lesson to it, it's, I mean, I can read romances, um, even borderlining like the erotic romances. I can do, I don't, they're okay, but my heart belongs in the fantasy section forever and always. Paranormal fantasy, paranormal, um, like, I could probably read like the nonfiction, like paranormally type books. Um, but yeah, I prefer fantasy. I love a world that I can escape in that is not real to ours, you know? So these are what I'm reading. And then this one, I just started it. I'm in, I believe I'm still in the first chapter. The woman that she works with, her friend goes missing and they're going to try and find her. Also while still trying to figure out who this shadow man lover is, so. I mean, we know who he is and what he is as of right now, but I'm not going to say what he is because it'll be a total spoiler if you guys ever decide to pick up this book. Um, but we want to know why. Why is he there? Why her? Like, yes, she's the Grim Reaper, but like, why? Why? <laughs> why? <laughs> So I am going to start reading that, working on books, um, my, the rest of my projects that I've started. So yeah, I am really looking forward to finishing those, mainly starting them because I haven't even 
really got into them yet. Um, so yeah, next up, um, is we'll do shop updates. So if you guys are done with the yarny bits or if you've already decided you're done and you didn't want to hear about my reading or anything like that, well, I guess you're already gone. So I'm sorry. Goodbye. Um, <laughs> But if you don't want to hear about shop update or chatter, that is fine by me. Hello. Thank you for coming and goodbye. Ta ta. Have a nice day. Cheerio. Um, <laughs> um, I hope you have a wonderful night. But we're moving into shop update and um, chatter. I don't know. For some reason, my hands are helping me think. <laughs> so, shop update. I just did this big order for the Salty Sheep Yarn Shop, which is a yarn shop in Portsmouth. Portsmouth. Oh my God. What year am I in? Freaking A. Um, in Swansboro, North Carolina, not Portsmouth, Virginia. What the fuck? Anyways, <laughs> she ordered a very large order and I am so happy and so grateful and thankful for this order although some of the colorways now I am definitely regretting redying and I am definitely never doing self-striping ever again <laughs> you know the people that literally their entire yarn business is self-striping yarns those people are freaking saints that process of dyeing yarn is so labor intensive and it takes so long <coughs> hats hats off if i had a hat i would take it off to you because you guys are the real champions in this business like i will never <laughs> dye self striping yarn again unless i actually have someone else do it for me <laughs> Like, I'm not doing myself again. It is terrible. I love self-striping yarn, and I feel like, you know what? I'm not going to encroach on a business that I just don't like. So self-stripers, self-striping yarn dyers are still getting their business from me. I ain't doing it. No. Um, <laughs> so, yes. But because that order is done, I can now start focusing on fall colorways. Whew, I'm so excited and I also am going to start dyeing up all the Halloween advents now and start getting them packaged up so I have the full month of August to get them all finished and ready to go to their homes that everyone has ordered I am so excited for this also Christmas advents guys oh my goodness Christmas advents are ending August 15th um I wanted to give myself a little extra time for this because I am doing two separate yarn weights. So if you were wanting one or the other, that is fantastic. Um, so yeah, if you are wanting to get a Christmas advent, it is 24 minis, 24 20 gram minis and one full 100 gram skein of fingering weight or DK weight yarn. You have the choice of the two. Um, so yes, those pre-sales end August 1st and we still have a lot of spots left. So I am really hoping that you guys will want them <laughs> because I am super excited. The Halloween advent has gone really well and it's just like, I'm just waiting. And I'm wondering if cutting it off at August 15th is too soon. But the only thing is, is I want to have them out by November. And in order to do that, that means I have to cut it off in August. So I have time to order the yarn, dye it all up, package it all up because it is a lot bigger. It's 25 individual little packages that I have to make per person. So that's going to be a while. So cutting it off August 15th I feel like if I push it any longer it's gonna get to the wire on that one um so please if you guys would like advent calendars um check mine out <laughs> um there are no theme there is no overall general theme to mine it is very much just like quintessential Christmas type things like Hallmark movies you know, like the perfect 
picturesque Christmas like think Thomas Kincaid Christmas paintings kind of thing you know like very picturesque basically is what I'm kind of going for so yeah um I think that's pretty much it the yarn and candle club I believe will be coming to the shop also in September is what I'm ultimately planning for now with that coming up I will let you know the scent of the month because I feel like I want you guys to know if you want to buy it or not um because I know some people like certain scents and others don't like me I am not a big fan of in I mean I like incense but I don't like things like dragon's blood which I do have some fragrance for that <laughs> but I also have fragrances of like what is it um brandied apples and stuff like that that smells amazing so I will let you know the scent of the month but the yarn color that comes with it will be the mystery so the yarn will be a mystery but the scent will be not will not be a mystery so you know what you'd be getting it will be a nine ounce soy candle with cotton wicks um trying to think what else and a mystery skinny yarn of my choosing. <laughs> um, all the colorways will be exclusive to the club. Whether or not I make them for purchase later is another topic. I'm not sure yet. So I'm hoping to get those by Sunday. Those are Sunday. September. The pre-orders will basically be for sept start September. Um... For the following month so you'll order in September get them in October kind of thing so that way like I said it gives you guys a chance to order it gives me a chance to dye and order the yarn if I don't already have it <coughs> if I need to order more so yeah sorry I'm just trying to get comfortable at this point so yeah anyways on to chatter that is it for shop update so for chatter, not much has gone on, just like I've been very busy dying, like every weekend, multiple days during the week, I've just been super busy dealing with that, with that big order from the Salty Sheep. Um, but also, I am guilty of letting my child, my, my children sleep in my room and or my bed. Colin still sleeps with us in bed. He is too. Yes, I know. There are a lot of people that are against co-sleeping. I don't need to hear that argument. Thank you. Because my children will not be 16 years old sleeping in my bed. They're only children for so long. I want to enjoy it. So Colin still sleeps in bed with us. Emma sleeps in her own bed, but her bed is in our room. She just hates sleeping alone which I completely understand when I was her age I hated sleeping alone I would always end up either in my sister's room or sleeping in my parents room <laughs> um so I completely get it you know so she's been sleeping in our room but we did buy her a bunk bed and I was really hoping that getting her this bunk bed would change her mind also we um She's had a TV in her room, but she doesn't have anything hooked up to it. There's no DVD player. There's no cable. Um, we don't have cable. We basically use fire sticks. We use Amazon and Netflix for pretty much everything. Um, so we ended up getting a fire stick also on prom prime day, put that in her room. And so she's been in her room, like getting comfortable and cozy, watching movies and TV shows and stuff like that on Netflix and Amazon. But also, then we bought her the bunk bed. So last night was the first night <laughs> that Emma has slept in her own room since she was about one and a half. Now, when Emma was born, and obviously I was a first time mom at that point, I was very susceptible to what I should do as a mom. And everyone told me, well, by the time she's one, she needs to be in her own room, in her own crib, 
sleeping and blah, 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 blah on this set schedule and blah, 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 blah. And we started doing that and it worked for about three months. <laughs> and then every night she would wake up screaming, crying. I would go in there, rock her back to sleep, put her back in bed, get in bed, half an hour to an hour later she wakes up screaming and i'm sorry sleep is a hot commodity in my household i want my sleep you interrupt my sleep and i am not a fun person to be around <laughs> i am the worst person on the face of the planet when i do not get enough sleep so when this started happening and it was repeating night after night after night and i was exhausted and cranky and grouchy i was like you know what it's just not worth it it's not worth it i will just put her in bed with me she can sleep better i will sleep better everyone's happy end of story <laughs> like simple solution for a simple problem put her in bed and that's what i did but ever since then she has always slept with us once colin was born we kicked her out and she finally slept in her own bed but it was still in our room so she's now sleeping in her own bed and it was one of those moments where i kind of felt like we just watched the movie hotel transylvania 3 you know wanda and oh what's his name the two werewolves that have all the the pups and they finally get rid of them they're like we can do whatever we want we're alone there's no kids with us we can do whatever we want and like, it was that kind of realization, like, she's not in our room. What is going on? What? We're, what? 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 Like, I even told Nick, and I was like, went in there because I left my coat on her floor when I was crocheting the um, rug. And she had fallen asleep, and I went to get my coat, and I thought she was kidding. I didn't think she was actually sleeping. And I was like, I know you're awake. And she was asleep. And I told Nick, I was like, Nick, Emma is sleeping in her own room. And he was like, no, she isn't. You're kidding me, right? Like, I have to see this for myself. And I just cracked the door open and we just watched her and we we're like, she's sleeping in her own room. Oh my gosh. And a part of me, I was telling him, I was like, you know, a part of me is like, oh, she's growing up. She doesn't need me. You know, like she can sleep in her own room and feel safe and like a big girl. And then the other part of me was like, oh my gosh, she's such a big girl. <laughs> and I feel like that is like motherhood summed up. It's like you're happy that they're growing and learning. And then at the same time, you're sad that they're growing and learning and you want them to stay where they're at. So yeah, I don't know why, but I got teary eyed with that. <laughs> so yeah, that has been the big, the big thing in our household right now is Emma slept in her own room last night for the very first time and it's funny because she's almost looking forward to bedtime now where she's like okay mom is it time for bed yet and I'm like dude it's seven o'clock I mean <laughs> if you want to go to bed at seven that's fine but uh no it's not bedtime yet bedtime isn't for another half hour like or hour and a half yeah because it was like seven when she was asking is it time to go to bed yet and I'm like no like bedtime isn't for another hour and a half your bedtime is 8 30 like slow your jets cool cool slow your roll <laughs> there we go cool your jets slow your roll that's what I meant to say so yeah that has been that was that was a milestone let me tell you but I mean I'm happy she's in her own room and that she likes it I've just never been that person to push my kids to do anything I've tried it and we all end up frustrated or unhappy and upset so I just kind of let it go with the flow in that in that situation so yeah other than that chatter wise nothing else is really going on just working so yeah um this podcast is extremely long it is 54 minutes and 22 seconds so I will let you guys go I hope you have a wonderful week ahead of you and I I just hope you have a wonderful week. I hope you've had a wonderful week since I've last seen you. So have a good night, good morning, wherever you're at. So yeah, bye.